Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. About to expose the ruse. The UN Climate Change Conference, December 2019, was responsible for raising awareness of the fraud that is being perpetrated globally to ensue globalism. And the fraud is global warming. Now, they've rebranded it as climate change to obfuscate from the truth because the climate always changes. But I digress. Let's look at some of the data. The UNFCCC, which is the United Nations Fund for Climate Change, received almost $42 million for the 2018-2019 budget to save the world. And they spent $32 million on it on staff, salary, travel, and ops. Only $4 million, less than 10% of the total raised, went for actual climate programs. I wonder how Greta Thunberg and Nancy Pelosi and Leo DiCaprio feel about that. I, they probably donated that much money themselves. Now the alarmists are proposing rebranding of climate change. Because it's becoming obvious that climate change doesn't mean anything, the climate always changes. But they're rebranding it for greater shock value. Are you shocked? Like Robert Shock? Writing for Adage this week, Aaron Hall argues that in order to get people to take action against fake climate change, rebranding is crucial. Since people have gotten too used to the idea that climate is changing and they need to be shocked into the notion that the world as we know is ending. Is there a better way to convey the urgency of the situation while also encouraging folks to take action? Could the tools of rebranding and brand naming create a more resonant, powerful name? Maybe like climate emergency, Mr. Hall asks. What he and his marketing team came up with was a series of much more frightening labels. <laughs> to stick on climate change in the hopes of jolting people into meaningful engagement. What he really means is to brainwash people into nonsensical action. Look at all these young children holding up signs that think that they have 12 years left. They're like 12 years old. They're all going to die when they're 24, according to Al Gore. What he and his marketing team came up with was a series of much more frightening labels. <laughs> to stick on climate change in the hope of jolting people into this engagement. The terms global meltdown, global melting, for instance, deliver more negative image than mere global warming, he contends. And as NASA adjusts the temperatures <laughs> every month, the names signal that ice caps are melting, but also create more visceral image in the mind. The real feeling of melting when it's too hot outside. A meltdown is disastrous, uh, even when it draws from the ultimate terror of a nuclear meltdown. An apt metaphor for the global destruction that we're all living. Now, I'll tell you, the global destruction that we're all living, living is the destruction of climate science the destruction of the natural sciences, and the destruction of the brains of the entire population below the age of 30. Indoctrination is king in this sector. And the mob mentality takes over and they feel like they're wanted and needed in these realms, which are realms of unscience, indoctrination, and dogma. I implore you, if you're part of this and you're listening to this video and you're on the fence, you're making a grave mistake if you're sending your children onto the front lines with these activists. They're not scientists. They could care less about the data, which we will get to at the end of the video. And they are ruining your children's lives. Because when the facts come out in a decade or so that everyone's been lied to, it will affect their consciousness. It will affect their psyche. It will affect it 
affect them in a very bad way. Now, an, uh, other proposed terms are climate collapse. And let me just get to the meat before we get to some more meat here. Climate collapse, climate chaos, on the other hand, instill a clear message or even direct call to action to other idiots that don't look at the data. Hall notes that this propaganda is amazing and there is nothing neutral about collapse or chaos. No, there's nothing neutral except that it's indoctrination in the biggest way. To up the rhetoric even more, Hall proposes the weaponized term scorched earth. Sometimes a brand name needs to be hyperbolic to truly capture hearts and minds, Aaron says. If we don't take massive action now, Earth will be uninhabitable. This could not be further from the truth. And we're going to get to the facts. Did you know that CO2 was once a hundred times higher than it is now during an explosion of life called the Cambrian Explosion? Yes, it's true. But whatever we call it, according to Aaron, impending climate doom is upon us if we don't act quickly, he concludes. Perhaps a new name will shift the needle, even just a little. Mr. Hall's contention that it doesn't matter if what is said is true as long as it elicits the necessary response reminiscent of a similar assertion by leaders of uh, Extinction Rebellion movement now, these people need to be taken down. They are domestic terrorists. And at some point, we will realize this, and it's amazing, that domestic terrorists control the planet. Now, let's get to one of these domestic terrorists. Now, it's unfortunate that I have to call out a female here, but I think that's what I'm going to do. The climate crisis is so severe, the actions of the denialists are now an immediate threat to our children. The immediate threat to the children are the alarmists. Hello, do you see what these kids are doing? They're indoctrinated. The flat earth educated right there. There's the flat earth on the piece of cardboard educated. Bang, 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 bang. They're all like kids. They're all like 13-year-old girls right there. And that's the, the mother of the girls that made the sign. And here the kids are at some official event being allowed to hold up this nonsense to instill fear in yet younger children. It's embarrassing. Now, what this woman writes is that in this age of rapid melting glaciers, terrifying megafires, and even more Toussaint hurricanes, what is that word? Did she Google that? of acidifying and rising oceans, it's hard to believe that any further prod to climate action is needed. Yeah, there is, because the entire opening paragraph is a false narrative. Not one of the things you've just talked about is true. There are no rapidly melting glaciers. Just as many glaciers are melting as are building. This has been happening forever in geologic history. There are no terrifying megafires. If you want to see a terrifying megafire, come back to Earth 12,700 years ago when the entire northern hemisphere was lit on fire, proven by the black mats, all of geology, and all of archaeology. Those were some terrifying megafires. The fact is that wildfires have been reducing in the northern hemisphere for 100 years. Hurricanes, not increasing, reducing in intensity, and periodicity, oceans cannot be acidic, period. They are salt water. They're basic in nature. There is no way to make an ocean acidic. It has never been acidic. It will never go beyond the neutral. And oceans are basic. They are not getting acidic. They're basic. And oceans rising. They've been rising for millimeters since the last 400-foot rise in a few hundred years. Nothing catastrophic is happening. The entire opening paragraph is bogus and based on propaganda that has been repeated by millions of idiots that let their children walk in the streets to make themselves look like idiots. Can you imagine when this girl actually has a job in the future? Why do you think she was wearing a mask? Because she probably doesn't want to be seen. Hello? Now let's get back to the alarmist claims. The first claim, rapidly melting glaciers. Well, 
I need to inform you that the Arctic ice is in multi-decadal norms, building rapidly, and extends all the way from Canada to the Arctic. There is no way in our lifetime that there will be no ice in the Arctic. Zero percent chance ever, which is why the alarmists have been wrong every single prediction. No ice, no ice, and no ice. And boom, the entire Arctic region is covered in ice, just like it is every year. Next claim. I feel sorry for the parents of this child. I feel sorry for that child, most importantly. This child is going to lead a life of alcoholism, despair. It's just going to be hell, almost like mine. And hopefully they'll wake up and become a champion for truth in the future. Next one, terrifying megafires. Oh, my God. Let's look at the U.S. forest area burn since 1926. Almost a decrease of 1,000%. <laughs> Here we see that there is no correlation between causation of CO2 and wildfires because CO2 has been rising the whole time here straight up and the wildfires will be going straight down in North America. Not only that, I dug up some data from Europe. These are European wildfire numbers. European wildfires peaked in 1990s and have been decreasing rapidly. And let's talk about CO2 additions. They're down here in black. Wildfires are reducing so rapidly that the observations based on GFED of CO2 adding to the quote-unquote climate emergency is reducing exponentially. There is no extra CO2 from wildfires because they're reducing globally. Now, let's get to the other false claim, hurricanes. These are some of the most studied phenomena on Earth, and we have data sets that are epic. And there is no evidence, zero, that there is any increase in global major hurricane frequency, size, dimension, periodicity, none. In fact, it's reducing in almost every factor. Straight down the pike. Can you believe this? They don't even look at the facts. I covered acidifying. Oceans cannot be acidic. They're basic in nature. They've always been basic. There's no way oceans can become acidic ever based on science. So anytime you see ocean acidifying, they mean less basic. They don't mean becoming acidic. And no point will oceans ever be in the acid range of the pH scale, which again is nonsensical, a double entendre, an oxymoron, and makes no sense. And then let's talk about sea levels rising. Well, satellite measurements show that sea levels are dropping. And this is since the modern era. As CO2 rises, the black dotted line, sea level has been the same your entire lives, your grandparents' lives and everyone else's lives. Some areas, isostatic rebound causes sea level to drop. In some areas, we have basin flexure down, which causes sea level to rise. But in general, globally, based on satellites and the modern era, there has been no change except a minor drop in sea level over the last 20 years. And that's satellite info. I can't give you better info. It's better than buoys. Better than buoys. And we're going to finish tonight on a small lesson in geology. Because alarmists don't want to look at the facts, geologic history. Geologists like myself, who are paleoclimatologists, are expert in the climate of Earth since its inception. And we believe that since life exploded during the Cambrian explosion here back in the Burgess Shale and other eras, CO2 was as high as 7,000 parts per million. That's 20 times the current level. <clears throat> and let me break it down further. The blue line here is the assumed average global temperature. And the alarmists are claiming when global temps rise, there's a catastrophe. But in all of geologic history, the catastrophes happen when global temperatures drop. All of the major mass extinctions fall right here. The Carboniferous Permian boundary, mass extinction. Temperature dropped in blue. The Jurassic Cretaceous mass extinction. Temperature dropped in blue. 
the biggest mass extinction we know of, the KT boundary here, no change in temperature whatsoever. But there was a drop in atmospheric CO2. Other things that happen at drops in atmospheric CO2, mass extinctions, mass extinction during the Silurian Devonian, drop in CO2, a drop in CO2 during the Cambrian, mass extinction. A drop in CO2 during the Jurassic Cretaceous, mass extinction. Drop in CO2 during the Cretaceous Tertiary, mass extinction. The exact opposite of what the alarmists are claiming is happening in real time on our planet. A reduction in CO2 re results in a mass extinction. A reduction in temperature results in a mass extinction. An increase in temperature, not so much. The only time in geologic history that an increase in temperature resulted in a mass extinction is the Permian-Triassic boundary. And this is the inception of dinosaurs. Right here. And I postulate this is the beginning of the Saturnian system. This is when we entered the plasma sheath. And we remained in it until just recently. Keeping temperatures warm all the way through recent times, the tertiary, the carboniferous, the coal measures, gigantic animals walking on earth, and basically a jungle for this entire time. But that's for another podcast. What you should glean from this is that high CO2 levels and high temperatures equal amazing times. Unfortunately, we are at the coldest point on Earth with the lowest CO2 concentrations, and it's about to get colder. That's not so good. That might be a climate emergency, just opposite of the one they're warning you about and taxing you on. We need CO2. We need plant food, or we will all starve to death. I hope you got something out of the video. Please don't send your children into the street to look like idiots. It's basically child abuse, and you will regret it. We love each and every one of you. If you're allowing your children to do this, you're part of the problem. Period.